Hi, I'm Chris Emsweiler, and I'm going to draw my life. So 17 years ago, I joined my mom, dad, and half-brother Ryan. I was named after my dad, except my name is cooler because I have a pretty sweet JR after my last name. I don't remember much of my life up until I started school. From what I was told, I was a pretty happy baby. As a kid, I loved video games and Pokemon. I'd come home from school and play video games with Ryan. He was always better than me in any game we played, but it was still always fun. And in kindergarten, my classmates and I would trade Pokemon cards in a little ditch in the playground. Seriously, I loved Pokemon. I'd also like to throw in the fact that when I was being potty trained, I had a hard time going number two. This led me to getting checked out by doctors, and they found out that I had chronic constipation. Apparently, I was so backed up that I was close to death. The medicine I was put on for most of my childhood made me gain a ton of weight. In first grade, I showed up to school rocking my new pair of jeans and feeling like a thug. Okay, maybe not a thug, but I felt pretty awesome wearing these jeans. Later in the day, this girl named Sarah stabbed me in the leg with a pencil. I don't remember why. I just remember that I was so mad at her that I never wanted to talk to her again. That changed later that night when she called me to apologize. From that moment on, Sarah and I were best friends. We still are, and honestly, I have no idea what I'd do without her. So from the time I was in first grade until about eighth grade, I lived a pretty rocky life. Things at home were okay, and I'd like to think I was a normal kid. I joined Cub Scouts and stuck with that. I played basketball for many years. I played football for a year, but I absolutely hated it and never wanted to play again. I played tennis, which landed me as an instructor years later. But the thing that made life suck was the bullying that I put up with for so long. Because of gaining weight from the medicine, I was pushed to the outside of everything and felt like an outcast. I had a few friends here and there, but I was constantly tormented. Life sucked, and in middle school, I had enough. I came home from school one day crying and pretty much in a very unstable mood. I went back to my room and pulled a belt out of my closet. I attempted to kill myself by strangling myself with the belt. When I realized that this wasn't what I wanted to do, I stopped myself. I dropped to the floor and bawled my eyes out. I crawled up to my bed and picked up the phone. Had I not called Sarah at that exact moment, I probably would have gave up on life again at some point or another. I can truthfully say that Sarah verbally straightened me out and saved my life. The next day, I went and talked to the guidance counselor at school. That became a regular thing, and I eventually started to learn how to fight back against the bullying. I would bully the kids back, and people started to realize that they shouldn't mess with me. I threatened to beat the living hell out of any kid who crossed my path while also trying to be a civil human being. And I don't want you to think that I was the really quiet kid who sat in the corner and let everything build up. But I wasn't the obnoxious class clown either. I was social when it was appropriate and a good student with high grades and stayed focused. Now that the bullying was coming to an end, I started to gain a bunch of friends. It was my 8th grade year when I met three of my closest friends. In homeroom, I became friends with Sammy, and we've had our moments, but I'd say we're pretty darn close now. At lunch, I sat with my new friend, Couch. He introduced me to his friend, Trona. We called each other by our last names, and it's stayed that way ever since. Couch came over to my house nearly every weekend, and we hung out a lot. We were pretty much a part of each other's families, and we even worked together. Also in 8th grade, I was a part of the yearbook club, and my advisor got me into track and field. I started throwing shot put and discus. I mainly joined in a failed attempt to lose weight. However, it stuck with me throughout high school, and after dropping shot put, I started to focus on discus. In my senior year of track, I finally reached my goal of throwing over 100 feet in discus. In August of 2008, my mom bought the UPS store that my brother Ryan worked at for going on 5 years. At 13 years old, I gained my first job. At first, I wasn't allowed to work out at the counter. I would help my mom with various busy work in her office. I hated it and started to work my way out to the counter. I would observe what Ryan and my other coworkers would do and how they interacted with customers. Eventually, I was working out at the counter because child labor laws were different for me since my mom owned the store. I was trained through watching Kyle, Dylan, and Ryan at the counter. At first, I was kind of a slacker when it came to working. I would come in after school and work for a few hours until we closed. However, when Ryan left the store as full-time and switched to part-time to pursue a new career, I stepped up my game. I started to take my job seriously and learn all that I possibly could. I even went to another UPS store to learn what I could from them and went to corporate meetings that my mom wasn't able to attend. In the summer before junior year, we hired Couch and everything was great. It wasn't long before customers would ask us if we were actually brothers. No, we are not. And in the almost two years we've worked together, I bet at least a hundred people have asked us if we're brothers. Anyways, after training two new employees and working through a crazy Christmas season, I was promoted to assistant manager at our store. I like to think that my coworkers and I are one big family, and when I go off to college in a few months, I'm really going to miss them. 
At the beginning of my freshman year of high school, I started getting into watching YouTube videos. My friend sent me a link to a Shane Dawson video and I thought it was the greatest thing ever. I watched all the videos he had up at the time and absolutely loved it. I was so interested in the YouTube community and in August of 2009, I started my own YouTube channel as The Amsweiler. I started out by vlogging about these Jehovah's Witnesses that came to my house that day. The videos started to turn into various rants of things that made me mad. I was slowly gaining views and subscribers. I got a MacBook for Christmas and I started to play around with iMovie and taught myself how to edit. Needless to say, I fell in love with it and it started to become a hobby. In my junior year, I started to take advantage of Facebook and Twitter and I spread my videos around like crazy. A lot of my peers at school started watching and sharing my videos. It was awesome and I started to actually feel like I was important for once. My peers knew who I was and would come up to me and tell me how they saw my videos and loved them. It was awesome. Later that school year, I became pretty close with a cool guy named Eli in a graphic design class. He designed my DMs Weiler logo, t-shirts, and YouTube layout. When my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer during my sophomore year of high school, he even helped me with designing the t-shirts we made to raise money for her. In my junior year, I discovered a kid in my school who was really good with making beats. I helped to promote his music because I knew he had a bright future ahead of him. His name is Aiden and we became really good friends towards the beginning of my senior year. Previously, we had talked on Facebook but never really talked much in person. In the spring of my junior year, Eli and I made an anti-bullying video called Bullying Ends Now, which was to reflect on my past with bullying and also let others know that if they're being bullied, they aren't alone. Because we couldn't get the rights to a few songs we wanted to use for it, I asked Aiden to make a piano melody for the video. From here on out, Aiden started to provide me with the music he created to use in my videos. The majority of the music you hear in my videos that aren't copyrighted or for my movie are Aiden's. Anyways, we won third place with Bullying Ends Now at a regional computer fair. I didn't release the video on YouTube until October of 2012 because October is Bullying Awareness Month. The video spread like a wildfire on Facebook and I was receiving crazy amounts of messages from my peers and friends. A few months later, I received a Facebook message from a girl in my school who told me that she really appreciated what I was doing with that video and she wanted to let me know that it gave her hope. I cried when I read that message because I felt like I truly gave back to someone who has put up with bullying for so long. If that girl is watching this right now, seriously, I cannot thank you enough for sharing that with me. I continued to make YouTube videos and post them. I took a break for a while for personal reasons and came back with an awesome new camera and new videos. I released another video with Eli a few months later called A New Beginning, which was about growing up and getting away from everything you've known for the majority of your life, which is something all high school seniors are about to face. It was during my junior and senior years that I realized that my future lies in the film industry. I found the perfect school for me in Florida and will be moving there in July of 2013. I cannot wait to start there. In May of 2013, as my senior year of high school comes to an end, I got a call from this school in Florida and was told that I had received a $25,000 scholarship. I will never be able to reenact how I acted or describe what I was feeling when I won that. Let's just say I pulled up next to my parents at a restaurant, got out of my car, and screamed, I did it! I won the $25,000 scholarship! To those who have supported me throughout my life, I cannot thank you enough. Those of you who knew how to make me smile when I'm having a bad day, do a pretty good job at it. At 17 years old, I can honestly say that I'm happy with my life and cannot wait to start the next chapter. And one final thing that is absolutely necessary to say in these Draw My Life videos, to anyone who's watching this, whatever you do in life, give it 110%. You can be successful if you put your mind and heart to it and you'll always have people behind your back supporting you through whatever. Make smart decisions and don't let anyone crush your dreams. Just live your life the way you want to and keep on dreaming. As always, I'm the Yumsweiler. Peace out. Whoosh.